Today, I'm gonna be showing you guys exactly how to get into MIT. How's it going? My name is Ashton Herndon. And as you can probably tell by now, pursuing a career in the film industry has kind of become my thing. I mean, come on. This should come as no surprise now. And even though I usually hide myself up as the college admissions guru, there's been one secret that I've been hiding that I just have to get off my chest. I am terrible with numbers. I know, I know. It's very devastating to hear. But that didn't stop me from trying to be the best damn student out there. When I was in high school, I would do anything and everything I could to be the most lethal academic weapon. I mean, I would pack my schedule with a bunch of different clubs, try and build a ton of different inventions, and really do anything I could to get into the best colleges possible. And even though I had my heart set on the Harvards and Yales of the world, one fateful morning as I was watching the best Boston campus tour out there, I came across the one school that forever changed my whole perspective on college. MIT, baby. I mean, for first sight, MIT was a match made in heaven. From the beautiful campus, to the insanely smart students, endless resources, crazy buildings, and doing it all as one of the best schools in the country, I started to think to myself, hey, I could really fit in here. But even though seeing this place was a dream come true, I became absolutely terrified because I realized that getting in here would be a lot harder than I thought it would be. And after hearing that admissions are impossible, but also very easy to get around, and that it's all about the scores, but also only about your personality, I had no idea how to feel about MIT anymore. And I started to question if I even stood a chance of getting in. And that's why I'm here today. I know that getting into college can be a super stressful process, and at times, it really does feel impossible to get into these amazing schools. But like Okay, that for you. I got a couple tricks on my sleeve to help you guys get a guaranteed spot here. So today we're taking a little road trip. So today we're going into one of the most intelligent places in America to see just how good MIT really is. And even though it may seem like you have to be a human calculator to get in here, there's a ton of different people out there that got in a completely different way than you think. From international students to D1 athletes to even a couple of coding geniuses out there, no stones being left unturned today, baby. All right. We're keeping the interview train rolling today, baby. I mean, yesterday we just finished up all the Harvard interviews which you can check out right here. And lucky enough for us, there's another world-class school filled with the best of the best students literally two minutes away. So I mean, I can just feel the knowledge pouring in by just simply being here. I love it. All right, you ready? Ah, see? You're catching on now, baby. <sighs> All right, let's do this. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Do you guys mind if I ask you a couple questions for a YouTube video? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure. Yes. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, go ahead. All right, awesome. You ready? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's go. I'm ready. You nervous? <laughs> <I'm> nervous. <laughs> Maybe a little. <laughs> a little. I'm definitely a bit nervous. No. Slightly. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We got this. We got this. I have a little trick and I've done it at every school and it works every time, I promise. We're going to take a simple deep breath here. Inhale and exhale. You feel any better? Like low key, yeah. <laughs> ah, see, I told you it works. Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do it. So, first question What is your name? Where are you from? And how many years have you been at MIT? My name is Shreya. Kai McLennan. Conrad Casebolt. John Sue Price. I'm from Oklahoma, Wyoming. Virginia. Southeast London. San Diego. Miami. Bay Area, California. Brooklyn, California. Aurora, Colorado. Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And I've been here for three years. One year. Two and a half years. Less than a year. A little less than a year. A semester. This is my second semester. I'm a freshman. I'm a freshman. I'm a sophomore. I'm a first year. First year. Third year. Third year. I am a first year. Wow, we got a newbie here. Welcome, welcome. And what was your number one reason for coming to MIT? I mean, it's MIT. <laughs> it's one of the best schools in the country. I don't know. To be honest, it's just like a really good school with a good reputation. It's the best school that I could come. Like, this is the best school ever. Good school, good academics, make a lot of money when you graduate. It was pretty appealing. I guess it was the American dream, I would say. It was like a childhood dream. And then like when it became reality, I just had to do it. I really wanted to be academically fulfilled. I feel like I wasn't really going to get that in Louisiana. So when I got in, it was like kind of a no-brainer. When I got accepted, I was full of joy. So this is, this is a dream come true. Match made in heaven. Love yeah. to hear it. Obviously, everyone here is very into STEM. So I was very interested in like the topics and courses. I've always been interested in computer science. It's like the best school for that. They have a really good aerospace program. The curriculum here is way more hands-on than a lot of schools. I always wanted to like go to a place where I could like build stuff and come in here for a preview weekend. The people are just really cool. I didn't like realize this at first, but the social scene is also pretty good. I also play on the squash team here so i really liked all the guys on the team and i just like it was just like a really good fit for me i think so oh that's a big squash guy i love it so it might be a bit strange but since
eventually, around 2021, I watched Spider-Man, and I thought, you know, because like Tom Holland and like, everyone else are like getting in or not getting in, I thought, let me try. I just thought that it would be cool to come over to the US um, from the UK. So yeah, that, that's another reason. That is definitely the most interesting answer we've gotten today. That's awesome. I love that. So obviously, there's a ton of different reasons out there to come to MIT. And whether you're a math whiz, an artist, or even just a well-rounded person, there's a million different reasons to come here. But at the end of the day, this place isn't ranked number two in the country for no reason. So all the coursework may not mean that everyone's happy with their decision. So I decided to see if this place really lives up to the hype. On a scale of one to 10, how happy are you with that decision? I'd say a solid eight. Eight point five. I would say eight. I'd say six. Six. Not because the school's not awesome, it is, but rather because I came here to find a job and like the market's pretty terrible right now. I'd say nine. Nine, nine and a half. Maybe nine. Eight. I think eight is a bit too low. I would say a ten. Ten. Ten as well. Oh, like ten. Ten out of ten for sure. Also a ten for the same exact <laughs> <Yeah>. reason. <laughs> Honestly, I did not think it was going to be as chill as it was. I thought it'd be super competitive and cutthroat, but it's super collaborative. Everyone loves to work together. They love doing school, but they also love going out as well, just chilling out. I like school, but I also like having fun. I think there's a good mix of that here, at least for me. It's a lot of fun. The people are cool. Kind of just intense in like a, in like a good way. Overall, like at least academically, I feel very, a bit too satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> it's a substantial workload. It's a lot sometimes. It's really hard. <laughs> Classes are really hard here. Very demanding on the academic level, but I mean, that's what I signed up for. Sometimes you're just gonna be like grinding, studying like all day, but like there are a lot of fun moments with people. I mean, it's definitely tough at times, but I think overall, like I really like what I'm doing and I like all the people here and I like Boston. I think every semester actually gets better as you know, I make more connections and my friendships get more solid. Now and then there's some weeks where it you know, goes down to like eight and seven territory, but um, I'm really enjoying my classes as you get older. So I think it all evens out, yeah. Wow, that was very insightful. Great answer, great answer. Damn. I mean, from the looks of it, MIT really does live up to be everything you wanted more. And even though this place may truly live up to that number two status, there's still the question of whether or not you actually get accepted in the first place. But even after hearing a ton of different rumors about how impossible it is to get in here, you'd be pretty surprised with some of the responses we got. So obviously, you got into MIT, which means you had some pretty good high school stats. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> so, what was your GPA, your test scores, and were you in any extracurriculars in high school? I don't know, man. No <laughs> one here knows how they got in, so. <laughs> GPA, I'm not sure about weighted, but it was like 3.98. 397 out of 4. 399 unweighted, I got 1B. I got like 1B freshman year. I had a 4.0 in high school. 4.0. 4.0? 4.0 GPA. 4.0 unweighted GPA. All A's in high school. I had like a near perfect GPA. I got like 1B throughout the entirety of high school school because like it was the pandemic and i could not be bothered to take a latin exam so the system is a bit different in france than in uh, for example in the u.s so i did gcse's and a levels and i got the top grades in all of them so 10 grade nines at gcse and four a stars at a level like a 95.6 out of 100 maybe a 3.7 at my french school wow look at you guys very well rounded love to hear it my sat scores i super scored i took it a couple of times i think i ended with a 15 60 1550. 1550. 1550 on the SAT. 1520. 1520. 1580. 1590. 1590 on the SAT. We don't talk about SAT. We, <laughs> but, but ACT was 36. 36 on the ACT. 35. ACT was like a 34. SAT was like a 1550 or something. Dang. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Extracurriculars. I was like very involved in squash. I was on the track team. I also competed for my county at the national championships. I played soccer um, and basketball. I'm on the soccer team here. I played soccer. I'm on the soccer team here. I did track in high school. I do track here. I also did soccer in high school. I played soccer and I was recruited by the track coach here. I did a bunch of like web development stuff and like coding projects on my own. I threw a lot of my time towards Mu Alpha Theta, which was like this math honor society. The math team. Some math team stuff. Math and physics competitions in high school. Some music stuff, some singing. I sung a bit, I guess. I did a traditional Chinese instrument. I played piano in like jazz band. I played percussion in like school band. I also founded a club for black students at my school which was predominantly white so it was kind of a novel thing honestly i included a lot of personal stuff on my extracurriculars like hanging out with my grandma that honestly like ended up being a big part of my application so i had a little ev club where you convert a, a gas car to electric so that's a big one wow yeah. damn next elon musk over here
hopefully we'll see we'll see so as you can probably tell by now there really is no geeky stereotype or academic status that defines mit and honestly these are by far some of the nicest students i've ever interviewed but at the end of the day the most important part of picking the right college is finding a place where you can truly be happy and lucky enough for you we got a ton of different answers to see if mit would be the perfect place for you and i have one final question so now that you've been at mit the amount of time that you have if you were to go back to high school do it all over again do you still think that you would have chosen mit Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Yes, yeah, I do. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, 100%. 100%. If I got accepted, I would definitely still go to MIT. It also ended up being like my only choice anyway, so I don't think there's anything I could change. I definitely would have like opened up my horizons, applied to more schools in the West, but shit happens. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I would have picked MIT because I'm trying to get into investment banking like in New York for more kind of traditional technical, you know, engineering stuff. I don't think there's a school that comes even close to what MIT has to offer. Sometimes it's tough. Like sometimes I'll be sitting in the library like five hours, six hours in a row. Just like, why did I come here? But like, it's really worth it. Maybe it's the most work. Maybe it's really rigorous, but I feel engaged and I feel like I'm getting a deeper level of learning that I wouldn't have been able to get really anywhere else. During the tough times there, I think once you're on the other side of them and you look back on how much you've learned, um, I think there's like zero regrets on any of it. The opportunities here are incredible. So There's so many different like work opportunities, research opportunities. It's MIT, <laughs> like, yeah. And it's like, is everything I could have asked for. I really enjoy what I'm studying. I really enjoy like all the classes and like I really like campus culture and the people here. The people here, the place, just everything that happens here. It's just everything I dreamed of, so. You heard it here first, folks. A dream come true. <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys have seen any of my other interview videos before, then you guys know that this is a point that I have to emphasize every single time. And even though all these kids come from a million different walks of life, the overall message just keeps getting stronger. Almost everyone we talked to said that they wouldn't change where they are today. And even if it wasn't exactly what they had in mind, these amazing students ended up exactly where they were meant to be. Life is always gonna throw challenges at you. And at times, it may seem impossible to keep going. But at the end of the day, going to college at MIT isn't gonna be easy. So as long as you push through and keep your end goal in mind, getting into your dream school is gonna be a lot less scary than you think. Just take a deep breath. Everything's gonna work out perfectly. You got this. I believe in you. So with that being said, if you guys found this video helpful, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. I do respond to every single comment. So if you have any other questions or video ideas, make sure to leave them down below. I do have a playlist of everything you need to know about college. So if you wanna go check it out, it'll be right here. And if you wanna join the family of over 5.4 thousand subscribers now, you can click right here. And yeah, that's it for me this week, guys. And I will see you guys next week. And before we go, you want to shout anything else out? Nope. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> <laughs>